If you want to be blessed, if you want to prosper in the things of God, if you want to receive the favor and the blessing of the Lord on your life, the psalmist says you need to refuse to listen to the ungodly's counsel or their advice. The people in the best position to shape your life are the ones who have your ear. Hello and welcome to this Monday edition of Destined for Victory with Pastor Paul Shepard. Where do you go when you need advice and counsel? Are you getting the truth of God's word or human opinion? Today, Pastor Paul shares the difference between godly and ungodly counsel and between knowledge and wisdom so that you can learn to listen to the right voices and avoid the wrong ones. Visit PastorPaul.net to listen to this or any recent Destined for Victory message on demand. That's our newly updated website, PastorPaul.net. Now, here is Pastor Paul, Senior Pastor at Destiny Christian Fellowship in Fremont, California, with today's message, Living a Discerning Life. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not In the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Blessed, that word in the Hebrews means to be happy or to be congratulated. To be happy, to be congratulated is the man or woman who does certain things. And here in the first installment in this two-part message, I want to suggest that to be congratulated is the man or woman who refuses to do the three things that we just read about. The first is to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Here's the way I want to put this. When you're positioning yourself for prosperity, you listen to godly wisdom. If you want to be blessed, if you want to prosper in the things of God, if you want to receive the favor and the blessing of the Lord on your life, the psalmist says you need to refuse to listen to the ungodly's counsel or their advice. Now, let me break this down and make sure you understand exactly what David is teaching us here. He's teaching us that there is godly wisdom that goes along with living the blessed life. And in order to live the blessed life, you have to follow the path of wisdom. Now, let's talk about knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Knowledge is pretty much facts. Knowledge is information, correct, accurate information. I know it. That's knowledge. I have that information. The second category is wisdom. Wisdom is I know what to do because of what I know. So knowledge is the fact itself. Wisdom is the ability to apply the fact in a necessary way. Wisdom is the ability to to apply my knowledge. Why know something if I don't put it correctly into use? So that's wisdom. Now that you know that definition, do you understand there are some people that have a lot of knowledge and little wisdom? Have you ever met some folk who know a bunch of stuff, but they just as stupid? Come on, let's just be real. Let's just be honest. People who are smart and dumb simultaneously. They're smart in terms of head knowledge. They know certain things. In fact, a lot of them have degrees, multiple degrees. But that doesn't make you wise. That only makes you knowledgeable about certain things. So knowledge is good. Better to know than to not know. All things being equal. But better to have wisdom than merely to have knowledge. In fact, a lot of us had parents and grandparents on and on down our family line. Those people were limited in terms of education, 
But a lot of them lived a life filled with wisdom. Isn't that the truth? And my grandmother never went to college in her, neither one of my grandmothers uh, went to college, but my paternal grandmother, my dad's mom, she used to say, boy, you better listen to me. I'm coming back from where you're going. What was she talking about? I've been to college. She hadn't been. She's not talking about college. I don't care about your degree. You better listen to me. Why? Because I know some stuff because I've lived life. And God has taught me and life has taught me. Some people didn't go to college, but they went to the school of hard knocks. And they learned wisdom when they went. Because you do know there's some folk who've been to the school of hard knocks and still dumb. (laughs) Come on, come on. There's some folk went to the school of hard knocks and they still haven't graduated from that yet. They being left back. Some of y'all don't know, that's what we used to call it, being left back. That's when you didn't graduate that grade and you had to repeat it the next year. I'll never forget in elementary school where they would line us up in the schoolyard. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Back in the old days, they would line us up in the schoolyard and the teachers would come out and walk the line and then they would take their classes into the their different rooms. And so we standing out there every now and then on September, that early September, first day of school, you stand there and you look over, I'm in fifth grade, but I look over in the fourth grade uh, line and I see somebody I was in fourth grade with last year. Come on, somebody. And I look over there and I, and I asked the person in front of me, why Johnny over there? And here's what they say. He got left back. <laughs> Some of y'all being left back because you haven't learned the right lesson and you should know more than you know, but you haven't walked in wisdom. Knowledge is I know it. Wisdom is I have the ability to apply the knowledge. Understanding is I've experienced it and I've benefited from the experience of walking in wisdom. And some people lack wisdom and they certainly lack understanding. And so you and I need to be people who decide we are going to invest in godly wisdom. When you're positioning yourself for prosperity, you listen to godly wisdom wisdom. In other words, don't take swimming lessons from drowning people. There are a whole lot of folk out here who got a whole lot to say, but you need to find out if they're going to teach you how to swim, do you know how to swim? Because there's some folk who want to talk a good game but you need to see them apply it. See, Paul, when he was coaching his spiritual son, Timothy, he said, watch my life. Look at me. I can teach you some things, not only with head knowledge, just watch me live out the truth of God and you'll understand some things that will bless you throughout your life. And some of us have got to understand, especially in today's world, because we live in a world where people value independent everything. And there's some folk who don't want to go to formal college, formal grad school and all that because they just want to be independently taught. And there are certain disciplines where you can succeed without uh, formal training. I get that. I know a lot of folks, some of the billionaires in our world, their folk will readily tell you, well, you know, Bill Gates didn't graduate with his under and, and, and this one and that one, Steve Jobs and all that. Yeah, but most of us will never create Apple. Come on, somebody. Or Microsoft. So... You probably, all things being equal, if you can, find your way into some formal education because even if you're going to end up being an entrepreneur or whatever, there's some things you can learn along the way. And so my point here is that we need to not value that to the extent that we don't commit ourselves to learning the wisdom that God would pass on to us through the right people. So look at what David is saying. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. If I'm not walking in their counsel, whose counsel am I going to walk in? I need to walk in the counsel of folk who know what they're talking about. And it is proven by their life. 
And there are some people who can teach you by their mistakes. Do you know you don't have to put your hand on the stove to find out it's hot? Let somebody tell you, you won't stay away from that. Oh, but that's probably just you. Okay, fine. (laughs) You got to understand, you can walk in the counsel of people who have succeeded in certain areas all their lives, and some of them are succeeding now, but they started out failing. And don't turn away from folk who have failed as long as they got up, brushed themselves off, thanked God for his grace and mercy, and then they figured out how to do it right and do it better. In fact, I've gotten to the place where I really don't want to hear from people who have never made mistakes much. I got a few friends who just, you know, they're fourth generation pastor and all of them and their father and grandfather and great grandfather, all of them, just mighty men of God and just, just wonderful. And you just hear nothing ever in their life or a lifestyle or anything. None of them got divorced. None of them got all their kids are saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, you know, that's fine for them. That's fine for them. But there are certain people they can't minister to. I'm so glad for some help. Don't go away. The rest of today's Destined for Victory message with Pastor Paul Shepard is coming right up. We want to thank all of you for your prayers and donations, faithful support that has a meaningful, eternal impact in the world. As God leads, please consider making a generous gift to Destin for Victory today. Call 855-339-5500 or give securely online at our new and improved website, PastorPaul.net. That's PastorPaul.net. You can also subscribe to the podcast at Spotify, at Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And stay with us after today's message when Pastor Paul joins us in the studio. But first, let's join him for the second half of today's message, Living a Discerning Life. There are certain people that I can minister to that some other folk don't have anything to say to them. They just tell them, you need to live right. Well, I'm living wrong, so now what? (laughs) I've blown it royally. Now what? Can you help somebody go from wrong to right? Do you know there's some folk who can only tell you you need to be right? Okay, we know that. But now help me get out of this ditch I dug for myself. Come on, somebody. We need to be people who decide we are going to listen to people whose wisdom hasn't always been perfect, but they've learned as they've gone along. And so... If you want to position yourself for prosperity, you want to listen to godly wisdom. Don't take swimming lessons from drowning people. Let's see what you need to do. Have you done it? (laughs) Don't tell me what you think. Tell me what you've experienced. And you want to examine your sources, especially in today's world. Examine your sources because we got stuff coming at us. We live in the information age. Here's the problem. Not all of it is accurate information. Some of it is what somebody thinks. Some of it is conjecture. Some of it is, well, the way I see it. Well, who told you you can see? What's verifiable about what you want to pass on to my life? Amen. And so we got a lot. Look at this. We live in the age where everybody got something to say. Y'all got to understand, a lot of us grew up, there was no Internet. So forget the blogs and all that stuff that we have now. And so you learned from sources that tended to be more reliable. Now people are learning more on their computers. And here's the problem. You don't know who put that on there. Who wrote this blog? And what makes you an expert? Oh, see, I'm messing with some of y'all's favorite people. Now, see, pastor, you just need to stick with the word. I'm preaching the word right now. And I continue to tell you, how do I know your blog is accurate? I don't know where you got that. There is such a thing as fake news. 
And so you need to understand, you need to examine your sources. You who went to college, you were taught, your professors, don't just write this paper, show me the sources. Y'all remember that? And we had to learn how to do bibliographies and footnotes. Come on, somebody. They want you to document. Why? Because the professor wants to be able to go back and check it and see if what you said is actually in that book. And so we live in a world today, people aren't giving you much bibliography. They just tell you what they think. It's amazing. There are folk who their full-time job is to tell you what they think online. It's utterly amazing. I've never seen a world like this. So glad my daddy is dead because it would kill him if he wasn't. (laughs) How we know you know what you're talking about? Everybody got a blog. Everybody telling you something. We got folks showing you how to do your makeup online. They don't have a job. They spend their time showing you (laughs) what to do with your hair, what to do with your makeup, what to do... (laughs) And that's their job. And my kids tell me, oh, yeah, they make a good living like this. And they find sponsors. Folk got YouTube pages and they doing whatever they do. And you see sponsors pop up. And the kids tell me every time you see that, they getting paid. So it doesn't matter anymore. If you can do something that'll catch enough people's attention, there are other companies that'll pay you because they look at how many folk are looking at what you're putting on. Amazing. And so we need to understand, you got to check your sources. When it comes to living your life, doing your hair, you can go online. Doing your makeup, you can go online. I'm not bothering you. Go right on. Let the Kardashians, all of them, just tell you how to dress, how to, how how to do whatever you got to do. But when it comes to living your life, get off of that computer and listen to somebody who's going to tell you what thus saith the Lord and give you some godly wisdom. Examine your sources. Everybody's book isn't worth reading. I know there's lots of books. Not all of them are worth reading. I have read many a book where after the first chapter, I was done. Like, oh, this is just too ridiculous. Check it out. You who aren't uh, so much into the, the blogs and all that, but you watch a lot of TV, check your talk shows. Just cause somebody sitting up there at a special guest doesn't make them an expert. Somebody thought that they were worth putting on their show, but that isn't necessarily what you want to live your life by. So check them out. Check all the shows out by the word, by godly wisdom. Because just because somebody's on TV talking about it doesn't make it accurate. Doesn't make it true. Doesn't make it uh, worth modeling your life after. So check your sources, check your information and let the Lord give you wisdom, the ability to take what you know and apply it correctly. And so you got to understand there are people who are married and they want to give you marriage advice, but not everybody married. In fact, There's some mad folk, you better not listen to a thing they say. You better, when they tell you A, go to B. Straight up, there's some folk just as kooky as they know how to be. Check out the source. And the other thing is you have folk who want to give you marriage advice who've been divorced five times. Wait, what? (laughs) You know, okay, the first one didn't work out. Okay, well, sadly, the second didn't work out. You on five? Six? And you want to tell me something? 
Only thing I'm learning is don't pay any attention because you haven't learned through all of those mistakes. At a certain point, you just got to wait and say, wait, is this a reliable source? Because at a certain point, you ought to hear the wisdom as they walk you through. Here's all the stuff I did wrong. And here's what I learned because of it. And so you got to make sure that you're checking your sources. When you're positioning yourself for prosperity, first of all, you got to listen to godly wisdom. That's what David meant when he said, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. President Ronald Reagan once said, trust but verify. Pastor Paul Shepard wants you to take that same mindset with you when you're in need of wisdom and counsel. Examine your sources. Check what they say against the Word of God. That's what true wisdom looks like, and that's how you can position yourself for prosperity. As promised, Pastor Paul joins us from his studio in California. Pastor, we are airing several messages here at the beginning of the month centered on the idea of positioning ourselves for prosperity. I think we have everyone's attention now. How do you define prosperity and what are some keys to making sure we are well positioned for it? Yeah, I'm really glad to be able to share a series about this because we must understand, we especially who live in a prosperous place like the United States and listeners in other countries that are listening to me, the reality is we're so blessed. We have so much that we can thank God for in terms of financial and material blessings. But really, the true definition, biblically speaking, of prosperity is to learn the will of God, Mm -hmm. to live by it, and to let him give you the byproducts of living in the center of his will. So prosperity from a biblical standpoint is not the stuff, but it is obeying God and letting him bring into our lives everything we need. It's much like what Jesus said in Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then everything you need, God will add it to your life. I have often said to the Lord, God, I would thank you for every financial, every material blessing you want to give me that I haven't yet received. But meanwhile, I'm going to live in constant gratitude as a result of the things you've already given me to do Because in doing your will, I position myself to experience your best in my life. And I hope this series will be a blessing to everyone who hears it. Yes, I'm sure it will be, Pastor. Again, the series is called Positioning Yourself for Prosperity. And be sure to come back and listen all week to the rest of this great series of messages. Well, it's a brand new month, one in which we'll honor moms, and we've got a great new resource to share with you today, a study guide from InterVarsity Press called Motherhood, Being Grounded in Christ. Being a mom can be complicated. It brings joy and love, but can also come with its fair share of frustration. In this 10-lesson study on biblical motherhood, student minister and mother Patty Pell helps you discover the truth about who you are, who God is, and how He sees you. As you learn to rest in your identity in Christ, you'll be able to love your children the way God does and help them understand their own identity as children of God. That's motherhood being grounded in Christ, and it's our thank you to you or perhaps that mom in your life. Request it when you make a generous donation to Destined for Victory by calling 855-339-5500 or visiting pastorpaul.net to make a safe and secure donation online. And you can always mail your gift to Destined for Victory, Post Office Box 1767, Fremont, California, 94538. We got to constantly remind ourselves prosperity doesn't simply mean money. A lot of people are prosperous. They don't have a lot of money, but they're rich in good works. They're rich in service. They're rich in helping other people. They're rich in in advancing the kingdom. I don't like the fact that there's so much emphasis in the body of Christ on financial prosperity. That's next time in Pastor Paul Shepard's message, Living a Discerning Life. Until then, remember, he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. In Christ, you are destined for victory.